Yes, our distinguished Senate President Pro Tempore, Senator Lauren Legarda, uh, the champion on environmental issues and, uh, of course, um, uh, issues pertaining to a sustainable future for our country is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. My dear colleagues, I stand before you today with a deep sense of responsibility and gratitude as we gather to discuss a matter of profound importance, a matter that transcends borders, cultures, nationalities, and beliefs. Forced displacement and statelessness continue to be a pressing concern globally. Based on United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees' latest Global Trends Report, there is a devastating record number of 114 million people forced to flee their homes because of conflict, persecution, discrimination, violence. The impact on these vulnerable and marginalized populations are further exacerbated by the effect of climate change. Based on this report, a significant number of refugees, asylum seekers, stateless persons, and internally displaced persons, IDPs, are women and girls. There is an increase in the number of women and girl refugees by 3%, now accounting to more than half or 51% of the total population of refugees. Women and girls accounted for 52% of all IDPs. And based on the data available for the 75% of the stateless population, slightly more than women and girls are stateless, 51% than men and boys. I wish to emphasize, my dear colleagues, that these are more than numbers. These are actual people who have been forced to flee from their homes and or deprived of their nationality. Women and girls are disproportionately affected, having experienced gender-based violence, discrimination on the basis of gender. As a fellow legislator, advocate, mother, daughter, woman, we are hosting the photo exhibition called Resilient Spirits, Capturing Courage, Celebrating Strength, Inspiring Inclusion, an odyssey of women and girls finding hope away from home. For this year's National Women's Month as a means to celebrate and illustrate the stories of women and girl refugees, asylum seekers, stateless persons at risk of statelessness, and IDPs how they have found ways to survive, to find hope, to rebuild their lives in the face of adversity, to have found solace in the Philippines. I hope that this is also an opportunity to celebrate our achievements in opening our arms to the vulnerable and the marginalized, being recognized globally and within the region as a model state and a beacon of light on refugee protection, addressing statelessness and the protection of internally displaced persons. Most importantly, I wish to emphasize the work ahead of us, the role we play as senators, as lawmakers, which is to ensure rights-based laws anchored on our collective duty to empower and address the challenges faced by refugees, asylum seekers, stateless persons at risk of statelessness, and internally displaced persons. This commitment is rooted in our shared humanity and the fundamental belief that all persons, regardless of background or origin, should be protected. Specifically, on the protection of internally displaced persons, I filed Senate Bill 1243, the rights of internally displaced persons, which ensures that gender responsive programs and services are provided. This bill is in line with the guiding principles on internal displacement and relevant existing laws, such as the Marawi Siege Victims Compensation Act, which we co-authored in the Senate. Being an IDP, while not a legal status, is not an end in itself, and that long-term solutions are pursued for them and with them. So I call on our dear colleagues to ensure that this is prioritized. We need this guiding legal framework in place. In fact, it's been more than 19 years since the first bill on internal displacement has been filed. I remember filing Senate Bill 3317, or the Internal Displacement Act during the 15th Congress. With the prevalence of conflict and natural hazards, with the Philippines being situated in the Pacific Ring of Fire, it is high time that the rights of our IDP's bill is enacted into law. If passed, the Philippines could be the first in Southeast Asia to have 
a rights-based IDP law. It would also contribute to the President's Philippine Development Plan, which covers IDPs and supports the fulfillment of one of the recommendations from the latest Universal Periodic Review to implement measures for IDPs with a gendered perspective. I also thank our Regional Development Committee, specifically Regions 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and Caraga, that have issued resolutions supporting the bill and to our LGUs who have stepped up and issued their own ordinances pending the passage of this national legislation. On refugee protection and addressing statelessness, we have acceded to the Refugee and Statelessness Conventions. The latest one was in 2022, where the Philippines became the first and only country in the region to become a state party to the 1961 Convention on the Reduction of Statelessness and adopted the Global Compact on Refugees. Nine waves of refugees have been welcomed into our humble lands. In fact, even before our accession to the Refugee and Statelessness Conventions, our family code and immigration laws already considered refugees and stateless persons. In the year 2022, Congress swiftly passed Republic Act 11767, the Foundling Recognition and Protection Act, ultimately addressing the risk of statelessness and the discrimination faced by foundlings vis-a-vis -vis other children. Despite these laudable legislative achievements, we have yet to enact a law ensuring their protection as gender discriminatory provisions still persist in a rather antiquated naturalization laws and our procedures to acquire Filipino citizenship remain restrictive. Pending the passage of these measures, we also recognize the challenges faced by the Department of Justice, Refugees and Stateless Persons Protection Unit. It would be interesting to note, Mr. President, that since their creation in 1998, this body under the DOJ has, for the first time in 26 years, received a dedicated budget for its operations through the GAA 2024. And they're so happy that we have provided them a budget since the time they were created. This is a testament to our commitment in strengthening the protection of refugees and stateless persons. We would also like to recognize and thank our partners who are with us today, from the executive and the judicial branches of government and the UNHCR, our main partner for the photo exhibition and this advocacy, and its fellow UN agencies, headed by resident coordinator Gustavo Gonzalez, who have all committed to support us. With this, I invite our esteemed senators and staff to visit the interactive photo exhibition right outside the session hall, which will be open till the end of March. May we reflect on the stories behind the images and renew our commitment to upholding the principles of compassion, empathy, and justice. And as we engage in this dialogue, let us not forget that behind every statistic, every policy proposal, every legislative debate, there are real people, mothers, daughters, sisters, friends, who deserve our compassion, our understanding, our commitment to justice. In conclusion, let us use the inspiration drawn from the resilience of these women and girls as a driving force to craft policies that reflect the values of our great nation. Thank you, esteemed colleagues, for your giving me your time, your attention, and dedication to this vital cause. Together, let us build a world where hope prevails even in the most challenging of circumstances. Thank you. Thank you very much, distinguished colleagues, Senator Lorne Legarda. Mr. President, our, Sen our uh, Deputy Minority Leader, Senator Risa Ontiveros, is seeking the floor. I move that she be recognized, Mr. President. Our Deputy Minority Floor Leader, Senator Risa Ontiveros, is recognized. Salamat kaayo, Mr. President. Um, at the outset, salamat sa a gentlewoman from Antique, Malabon, Malabon and Laguna. Laguna. Salamat for for her privileged speech. Um, 
as in many instances when she speaks about uh, various of our common advocacies. Um, I have uh, one follow-up question for today. Uh, well, una, salamat sa pagunita nila sa uh, sitwasyon, persisting situation ng ating mga internally displaced persons, and for highlighting uh, both the the climate change aspect of that displacement and also the gender aspect. My one question for today is, I noticed bukod dun sa sinabi ng gentle lady na 52% of IDPs are women and girls, yes. that that percentage is also growing by 3% year on year. Would the good gentlewoman say that tulad ng mga fenomena ng feminization of poverty, and feminization of migration na may, may nag-occur na parang feminization of internal displacement as well, Mr. President. Uh, tama po. Unang-una po, ako'y nagpapasalamat sa Deputy Minority Leader sa kanyang palaging uh, masigasig na uh, hindi lang pagtatanong, kundi uh, pagsusuporta ng ating mga shared advocacy. Salamat po. Pangalawa, tama kayo sa inyong paggamit ng salita na feminization ng poverty feminization ng epekto ng pagbabago ng klima at tinatanong nyo ang feminization ng statelessness and ng uh, internal displacement internal displacement uh, oo, oo dahil alam natin kamo kayo nangyari sa Marawi whether the internal displacement is caused by natural causes like climate change mm. or uh, conflicts internal, internal conflict. conflicts okay. yes um, by even clan wars mm, or even people. violence in the community, mm -hmm. sila ay uh, lum lumiliban, umaalis sa lugar, may gender perspective, malakas po yun. Kamukha pag meron mga disaster na nangyari, ang ating mga refugee camps, or sabi natin hindi refugee camps, yung ating mga tents mm. uh, para sa internally displaced, uh, wala pong uh, maliwanag yes. na mga rules, ang DSWD ba, o mga ahensya ng gobyerno, kung anong para sa women and girls, ang mga uh, latrines, mga banyo na ginagamit. Hindi natin alam kung pribadong para sa women and girls. Uh, at alam nga natin, base ng mga statistika, na mas malakas or mataas ang epekto sa women and girls. Kaya uh, minarapat kong magsalita ngayong buwan ng Marso para bigyan ng uh, lalo pang maigting na focus ang feminization hindi lamang ng kahirapan, ng poverty, kundi na rin ng feminization ng uh, statelessness, ng internally displaced persons, at ng uh, mga refugees na nagpupunta rin sa Pilipinas. Uh, salamat, uh, good gentlewoman. Uh, at para din sa pagbanggit ninyo, kahit sa privileged speech nyo, ng mga uh, internally displaced persons, lalo na internally displaced women and girls, sa Marawi. So, batay po dun sa uh, karanasang iyon at yung kaalaman natin, natin tungkol sa uh, karanasang iyon, what are the specific vulnerabilities or needs of women and girl IDPs that require a better response, oh, Mr. President? Uh, as I said, whether it's climate-induced or uh, wars, ano ba ang kanilang mga pangangailangan? Uh, una, ang kanilang mga tirahan temporary shelters, no? Opo. Ang kanilang tutulugan at mapapahinga. Pangalawa, ang kanilang mga uh, physical na pangangailangan, uh, especially for those still menstruating, yes. uh, even those who are menopausing, mm -hmm. ang kanilang mga pag-check up sa mga doktor, at, at syempre buntis. ang mga, mm -hmm. I'm sorry? At, at kung buntis. At uh, kung buntis woman. sila, oo, at... Uh, ang kanilang mga banyo, uh, private rooms, at siyempre yung katahimikan ng kanilang, uh, even for mental health, not just the physical needs, but even the mental health. At minsan, pagsiksika ng mga lugar sa mga skwelahan, sa mga temporary shelters, at ito hindi lamang sa Pilipinas, nagdidikit-dikit na ang mga hindi lang magkakamag-anak, uh, pati ang magkakapitbahay, or hindi magkakakilala, strangers. And women and girls, with men and boys. Kaya nga nagkakaroon na ng um, pag-violate sa pribadong karapatan ng women and girls. And I speak not just in uh, the Philippines, but even in war-torn countries where there are uh, internally displaced persons. Uh, 
I speak, let's say, for example, uh, as you see uh, very blatantly on social media uh, and online from photos, what's happening in Gaza, uh, how women and girls have been the victims of genocide, how uh, shelters and hospitals uh, have been bombed. I'm not saying that men are not victims, but especially innocent civilians, women and girls, even in hospitals, and even in UN buildings and refugee camps have been rendered uh, vulnerable and they have been shot out and killed, even those who are lining up for food. So uh, this really, uh, as a Filipino, as a human, uh, breaks our heart. Uh, what's happening in areas in the Philippines, again, climate-induced, or brought about by internal conflicts and wars, but even in faraway areas, in Sudan, in Congo, in Ukraine, in Gaza, uh, it's happening all over the world. And so I felt it was perhaps uh, the right time uh, to bring it uh, to our national attention and focus, of course, on what is doable within our means and within our resources, which is uh, what we can do in the Philippines. Thank you, uh, good gentlewoman. Speaking of uh, focusing on working within our resources and speaking of the right time, I would join with the good gentlewoman that it's always the right time to bring up not just these issues, but also the gender per perspective within these issues. Yung sinabi din nilang heartbreak nila about the raging conflicts in uh, Gaza, in the Ukraine, and elsewhere. Uh, I share also uh, that heartache about those. And as a fellow woman, would also uh, like to uh, lend our country support to the search for just and lasting uh, resolutions, no? peace uh, in those countries. That is also peace for the women uh, and girls there. And as far as working within our resources is concerned, uh, perhaps uh, this representation, Mr. President, could uh, invite uh, the good gentlewoman for us to work together in making an even more gender responsive budget uh, in the 20, through the 2025 GAA uh, together. I would be so happy to work with your honor, Mr. President. And uh, so this would address the needs of internally displaced persons insofar as even psychological and psychosocial support, their nutrition needs, access to education even while in temporary shelters, and access to documentation mm. because they are forced to flee. And if their documentation is in the area or province where they're from and the area where they fled, Paano ang kanilang documentation yes. kung hindi naman nila alam kung paano gagawin doon? And of course, gender-based violence still exists. So mm -hmm. you asked earlier, what else can we do? This one, two, three, four, five issues must be addressed. And I would be happy to work with the DOJ Bureau mm -hmm. that in 26 years, ngayon lang sila nagkaroon ng pondo. Thank you, Senator Sani Angara, Chairman of the Finance Committee, for accepting my humble amendment of... 10 million, I think, or less, uh, that finally funded the 26-year-old bureau, which was never funded from the time it was created. And they are here now. Uh, our state council, Chan, is here. Uh, he left. He was here earlier at 2 o'clock. Our um, state council from the DOJ was here. In fact, uh, the Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, uh, Hernando, was also present since 2 o'clock. We still have the UN uh, officials present here. So thank you for your support. And I would want to see a, uh, yes, even better and uh, more gender sensitive budget, which I'm sure is already, because I can see the chairman here. I'm sure he has made sure that the GAD allocation is followed and all of that. So we also have a two million amendment on capacity building on laws and, uh, and women under the Development Academy mm -hmm. of the Philippines. Oh, what we did was to engage the DAP in capacity building so that they can hold uh, capacity building seminars. Maybe we can start with the Senate so that all the 1,000 staff officers and employees here can also uh, be trained for this.
And I'm sure, good gentlewoman, the Senate God, yes. always on their toes, always at the forefront of our various yes. uh, gender se sensitivity programs here at the Senate uh, would be, uh, I'm already uh, presuming to speak for them, but I'm guessing would be really glad to work with us uh, on this, uh, Mr. President. And lastly, um, I'd also like to ask for the good gentlewoman's support for our IDP bill as well, uh, which is currently referred to the Committee on Justice and Human Rights, and this is Senate Bill 594, possibly uh, a companion measure and possibly to be consolidated with that of I think, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this was the bill I filed 19 years ago, okay. 15th Congress. Yes, I uh, refiled it uh, since the 15th Congress, yes, and it's pending in the Justice Committee. I actually so wrote same. the chairman, Senator Talentino. To, to give it priority, I'm sure he will. And I'm sure I can see Senator uh, Robin Hood Padilla, who's keenly listening, and I'm sure he would like to co-author that measure as well. I can see him nodding, and I'm certain that he agrees 100% with everything we're, talk we, we're discussing now, right? So thank, thank you. you, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, salamat kaayo, Mr. President. And the Majority Leader as well, yes. Thank you very much, Senator Ontivera. Mr. President, Senator Robin Hood Padilla is also seeking the floor. I move that he be recognized, Mr. President. My distinguished colleagues, recognize Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Maraming salamat po, ginoong Pangulo, at uh, sa ating uh, pinunong mayorya. Gusto ko lamang po talagang uh, uh, purihin ang ating uh, magaling na senadora, uh, Senadora Lona Ligarda, sa pagkakabigkas po. At uh, ito pong usapin ng IDPs lagi po talagang uh, ang nagiging biktima nito ay ang mga kapatid po ninyong mga Muslim. Dahil katulad po ng sinabi nyo kanina, yung stateless, yung mga kababayan po ninyo na galing ng Saba, na uh, ibinalik dito sa ating bayan, yan din po talaga ang nagiging problema namin. Uh, alam nyo man po ninyo sa tradisyon at kultura, na mga Muslim talaga pong uh, hiwalay ang babae at lalaki. At napakaganda po ng uh, panukala na ito at uh, sapagkat uh, i-protection po ito ng mga kababaihan. At uh, iaan po talaga ang laging prioridad ng mga kamuslimin. Ang uh, babae po sa amin ay parang diamante. Iaan po ay uh, talagang aming kayamanan. At uh, napakaganda po nito. At gusto ko din pong uh, purihin uli ang ating senadora sapagkat nabanggit niya po ang uh, mga nangyayaring karumaldumal na krimen na nangyayari po sa mga kababayan, hindi po natin kababayan, mga uh, kapatid natin in humanity dyan po sa Gaza. At uh, ako po ay natutuwa sapagkat uh, nanggaling po yan sa ating uh, pro-tempore na sa kanya pong balabal nakikita din po natin ang kulay ng uh, Palestinian. Uh, nagpapasalamat po ako sa inyo at uh, kamulatan po ito uh, binigyan nyo po ng kamulatan ang ating mga kababayan sa nangyayari hindi lamang po dito sa ating bansa kundi sa buong mundo kaya ako po ay kasama ninyo kabahagi nyo po ako mabuhay po kayo maraming salamat po Salamat uh, kay Senator Robin Hood Padilla sana po ay mag-co-author kayo ng IDP bill na 19 years na nakapending at tama yung sinabi nyo sa ating mga kapatid na Muslim uh, sa Mindanao ay dumadaan ng backdoor, nagpupunta ng Saba. Pagating po doon ay hindi nila alam kung saan ba sila talaga at hindi protektado ng Estado at hindi nabibigyan ng mga karapatan na dapat sa kanila po. Kaya pagtulungan natin yon at tignan natin sa ahensya ng gobyerno, gaya ng bureau yan uh, in charge sa DOJ, meron talagang nakatutok dyan eh, na hindi nabigyan dati ng lakas dahil walang pondo. Ngayon may pondo na sila. At sa susunod na taon, lalo pa natin bigyan ng pondo at tignan natin yung paggamit ng pondo at ano ang kamulatan na madudulot nito. Salamat, Senator Padilla. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat sa ating mga colleagues. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, with that, I move that we refer the privileged speech of our Senate President Pro Tem, Senator Lauren Ligarda, and the uh, interpolations and manifestations they're on to the Committee on Justice and Human Rights. So move, Mr. President. There have been no objection. Motion is approved.